Hey guys, my name is Don and you're watching my channel Don Astronomy. This is uh, the second part to my automation, uh, observatory automation video. And the first part was me putting the, uh, the main mechanism, the drive wheel into place. So I had a device that would engage it and then disengage it so I could use it manually if I needed to with my hands. Um, and this video is about installing all the electronics um, and uh, the motor control and control board and all that kind of stuff. So before I can do that though, I needed to find a case. So I went to my local hardware store and I, I found this pre-made metal first aid cabinet. And the beauty about it, it's just not for first aid, but it's also a multi-purpose cabinet. And just by chance, check this out, it can be also used as an observatory motor control cabinet. What are the chances of that? So that's the little cabinet there. Uh, as you can see, it's pretty much ready to go, pre-built for you. Now what I want to do is, with this cabinet, I want to put my power supply, my DC, 24 volt DC power supply, my stepper motor controller, and my Arduino unit. So it's going to get quite warm with those in here, so I need to put some vents in it. So I've come up with I've got this aluminium vent which I'm thinking of putting in the front somewhere to let some of the heat out. And I've also got this vent as well, it's a steel vent, but it's, it's, it's larger than the case. So I'm going to have to do some adjustments with that, but I'm thinking about putting that in the bottom so that the air can just come up the bottom and then escape out the top. That's the idea anyway. Now the other thing is... Uh, I will be mounting my switches in the front of this cabinet. So to start with, I have uh, an emergency stop switch, and this also doubles as my power on switch as well. And the next thing I've got a switch, which is just a general run switch, which will turn the motor on, so it will run. The other switch will be a direction switch, so one way will be right, the other way will make it go left. Now, I've also got a speed controller. This is a 10K linear pot which will mount on and I'll have a knob for that on the other side so I can also control the speed. I'm, I'm hoping this is all going to work. Um, the main thing is at least I can get it to a stage where I can manually do it and then I'll work f on from there. Okay, let's see how we go. So it's um, time now to drill the holes to put these switches, control knobs on and I just want to try and get them evenly spaced across here. I'm going to leave space over here in case I need another switch. So I've changed my mind, um, I'm not actually going to put that switch on this side, I'm actually going to mount it over here, leaving room for my spare switch over here, and the reason that is because, because it's power, it's 240, it, it means that it's not moving very much, so the wires aren't moving very much when I, if it needs to be open, as opposed to um, up here. Just a thought. Thank you. 
the battery on the camera was getting low so I've just had to charge the battery so since then I've just put this bit of timber in here and that's just to get some pressure in the corner here so that when I push this um, it doesn't bend the door in because um, there was no support on it before but apart from that I haven't really done much else I have four little brackets that I've, drew, uh, I've screwed some uh, holes in there because I've got my power supply here and I want to mount that so it's just slightly about a centimeter off the ground because there's vents here and I want to make sure that it's not hard up against the cabinet so that it's got to be a clearance for air to get under it so that'll probably go in there something like that this is my stepper motor driver which will get I will mount with some holes there on the side and again I'll keep that up so that the heat sink and the fan can get air underneath it and then I have my Arduino unit here which will probably go in like so. I've also got a couple of little spaces here that will lift the Arduino off the ground and I'll mount that so it's off the ground as well. So I've thought about it and um, just to be cautious, I've decided not to go with the timber inside this cabinet. I've got some aluminium tubing so I'm going to put that there instead. Okay so I feel a bit better about that. Okay that's much better. So I've made another change. So what I've realized is my Arduino unit, at the moment I power it by the USB port and I realized I don't want to have to turn the computer on in the observatory just to power this up every time I want to move the observatory roof with the uh, controller. So what I've done is I've bought myself a DC power supply. It's a 12 volt DC power supply which will power this Arduino unit. And I know, yes, it's overkill, uh, but there'll be other stuff that you will see uh, in the next episode that's connected to this. And uh, I also bought a screw shield for the Arduino. Uh, so it means I can just screw everything straight into these terminals and it'll make it easier when I connect everything up. And I've also remounted now, because I didn't have enough room in the case, I've remounted my Arduino unit on top of this power supply. And as you'll see when it goes in the case, it gives me easier access to connect everything later on. Okay, so that's the, um, the power supply and the Arduino mounted. And as you can see, I've got much better access to cable this all up. Now I'm just going to put my emergency power switch in next and my grommet for the 240 volt uh, cables to go in. Okay, so um, that's as far as I can go with this. Now I just have to get the 240 volt side of these power supplies and this uh, power switch wired up in town via electrician and then I can uh, finish wiring all the rest of it. So you've been busy, Troy? Working up, mate. Working up. Can not keep up? Good problem to have. Yeah. And... Um, your offsider, he's uh, enjoying himself at the moment. He is, mate. Oh, well, <laughs> yes and no. He's he's pretty busy up there too, mate. So how um how neat do you want this, mate? Or, Doesn't have to be too neat, but... mate. It's just me. I'm the only one going to be seeing it. All right, she's all wired up. Uh, thanks, Troy. Nice, neat job from Idina Electrical in Bathurst. I can now uh, move on and start to wire the rest of this up.
All right, the fun begins. Okay, it's all mounted up. I'm pretty happy at where I am today. Uh, it's Saturday afternoon and beer is calling me. I've also got some HA data to shoot tonight. It's a quarter moon, it's probably the last night. And I've got to get this observatory tidied up. So I'll finish this all off tomorrow. I've obviously got cabling still to do, um, but I'm at a good stage at the moment. I'm pretty happy. All right, it's Sunday and I've still got a bit to do. First is to mount this grommet. And it's in a tricky position. Check, check, check. Check, check, it, check, 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 check. And I'm gonna check, 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 it, check, check this one out. Okay, I've uploaded my code to the little microprocessor, little Arduino unit. So let's see if it works. Of course it's gonna work. I've already tried it. Why would I make a video and show you it fail? It'd be a bit silly, wouldn't it? There are a few teething problems. One's a reverse switch. It uh, only works intermittently. I've checked the electrical connections. It's all good. It's probably the code. As I said, it's very basic code just to get the basic functions of this working. That's all I've done for now. The other thing is I've still got some work to do on my drive wheel. And I've got a fair bit of flex in there because it's lightweight steel. So I just need to brace this up a bit and I'll be able to get a little bit more pressure on here because it does slip a little bit. Okay, we'll start by um, turning it on. And you can hear the fan running, it's not too loud. It's okay, I'm happy with that. Um, the run switch. Now I've got it quite low at the moment and you can see it's turning very slowly. And as I turn the knob up, Hopefully we will reach maximum speed, which is not as fast as I would have wanted, but look, it's okay. It's fast enough, I think. And uh, I will now slow that down, see if I can get it back into reverse. Oh, look at that, worked. That's nice. So there are improvements. I just need to get a little bit of grip out of here. I've also got to make some other adjustments on the observatory just to make it a little bit smoother, but overall, I'm fairly happy with um, how this has turned out for now. I'll just park it here. And turn it off. 
So my goal is to have the observatory completely automated, but there's a few things that are going to take some time before that happens. One is I've still got to get um, software which is going to interface with my acquisitioning software, whether it be Nina or whether it be Sequence Generator Pro, and talk with the microprocessor in here. So it would be an ASCOM appliant uh, driver of sorts which will do that. Um, and the other tricky part with that is it has to provide a model and it needs to know exactly where your um, opening of the, the aperture opening of the roof is in relation to where the telescope's pointing because it's pretty easy if it was just an alt as uh, telescope then it just simply goes up and down and around so the, the coding that you would require to um, know uh, for the roof hatch to follow that would be a lot easier but because it's an equatorial mount telescopes often off to the side and shooting off at different angles so it needs to be able to know exactly where your telescope is pointing from that perspective so it almost puts like an, a third dimension into the software so that's quite tricky so I'm not there yet but I do have a hack I'm hoping that's going to work and that's what I want to um, introduce into the next video so fingers crossed that's going to work but obviously I'm going to try that out and if it doesn't work even if it doesn't work, I think I'll go ahead with the video because it was an attempt and um, hey, sometimes you just gotta fail. Hopefully I won't, but um, we'll see how we go with that. Thanks for watching, guys.